preserved for our walk in this world. They Welcome back to Weekdays with Jesus and John. I'm so glad that we get to spend this time together. We finished chapter 6 yesterday as we looked at the, the followers of Jesus and those on the fringe. Chapter 7 begins with Jesus well, going to a feast, the Feast of the Booths, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But let's go ahead and read John chapter 7, verses 1 through 24. John chapter 7, verses 1 through 24. After this, Jesus went about in Galilee. He would not go about in Judea because the Jews were seeking to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of booths was at hand. So his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always here. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify about it, that its works are evil. You go up to the feast. I am not going up to this feast, for my time is not yet fully come. After saying this, he remained in Galilee. But after his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he also went up, not publicly, but in private. The Jews were looking for him at the feast, saying, Where is he? And there was much muttering about him among the people, while some said, He is a good man. Others said, No, he is leading the people astray. Yet for fear of the Jews, no one spoke openly of him. About the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began teaching. The Jews therefore marveled, saying, How is it that this man has learning when he has never studied? So Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone's will is to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own authority. The one who speaks on his own authority seeks his own glory, but the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and there is no falsehood. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered them, I did one work. And you all marveled at it. Moses gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers. And you circumcise the man on the Sabbath. If on the Sabbath a man receives circumcision so that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me because on the Sabbath I made a man's body whole as well? Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Now let's begin with talking about the Feast of Booths for just a moment. The Feast of Booths, or also known as the Feast of Tabernacles, is when the Jews would camp out. They would build booths, they would build tabernacles, they would build tents, and they would sleep outdoors in them. And it was a, a festival to remember the time when their ancestors traveled in the wilderness in tents. And traditionally, they would leave the middle of the roof open so they could see the stars to remember that their ancestors slept under the stars. And it was just a reminder of that journey from Egypt to the promised land. So this was that feast and his brothers, his family, all the Jews were going up and they challenged him, you know, you need to go up, you need to show yourself to everybody. If you really want to be this important person, this famous teacher that you want to be, then, then that's where you need to go. Now, they didn't say this because they really wanted him to be known. They, they said it as brothers who doubted their brother. You're not really who you say you are. So if you go, then you can prove it. If you don't go, you're just, and you know, they're, they're trying to set him in a situation where there's no winning. So Jesus says, I'm not going, I'm not going to show myself. My time hasn't come. You go. And he stays back later. He'll go, but he won't go with a show. He'll just kind of sneak in so that people don't really know who he is and that he's there. And then halfway through the feast, he begins speaking. And that's when he is challenged well, by the, the crowd and by the leaders. As he begins to, to speak, they challenge him because he doesn't have credentials. Who is he when, when he's never studied? He didn't have a rabbi. He didn't go to rabbinical school. Who does he think he is? Whose authority does he speak with? And Jesus says, my, my authority is from above. I'm not seeking my own glory. I'm seeking the glory of the Father. And he challenges them that really that's who we ought to be seeking to glorify. 
Not in it for ourselves, not in it for our own recognition, not in it to make a name or to make a dollar, but in it so that God gets the glory. Living so that God is recognized as the one to whom honor belongs. That's what Jesus was doing. Then he says, you know, you had the law of Moses, you haven't kept it. Why do you seek to kill me? He's challenging them because remember a few chapters earlier, he had healed a man on the Sabbath day. And they were challenging him on that and they were seeking to kill him because that they couldn't stop him because the crowds were following him. That's the leaders and the Jews are saying, who's to kill you? They don't know the plot behind the scenes yet. And so Jesus says, for the leaders who are present, he challenged them about keeping the Sabbath and keeping the law of Moses. See, Jesus had healed a man and made him whole on the, on the Sabbath day. And they didn't like that. So he says, look, here's what you do. You circumcise on the seventh day, on the Sabbath day, because the law of Moses says the child is supposed to be circumcised on the eighth day. And in order to keep the law of Moses, you break the law of Moses by doing work on the Sabbath day. He puts them in a no-win situation between that rock and a hard place, that catch-22. How are you going to keep the law of Moses and not do work on the Sabbath, yet keep the law of Moses and circumcise on the Sabbath day? And so there's a challenge before them. They don't have an answer. So his answer is, don't judge by appearances. Judge with right judgment. You know, there are many in our world today that I hear in the religious world and outside the religious world that the quote from Jesus in John chapter 7 says, don't judge, judge not, that you be not judged. What they forget is the latter part of that verse, which says, because the judgment you use to judge is the judgment that you'll be judged with. Jesus isn't saying not to judge. He's saying don't judge by appearances. Don't judge unrighteously. What, however you look at people and the, what you use to judge them is what's going to judge you. So if you judge unfairly, realize you're going to be judged unfairly. So if we're going to use discernment, judgment, then we need to do it carefully. We need to do it based on what is right. I heard someone say many years ago, that we're not to necessarily judge in that way by appearances, but we can be a fruit inspector. You know, when I go to the grocery store and I'm buying a bag of apples or I'm buying a single apple or maybe some tomatoes, when I go to the farmer's market, I, I pick up a tomato or I look at the tomato and I'll choose which ones I want. I am judging which tomatoes I want. I am being a fruit inspector. Same thing with apples, oranges, or bananas. We can be fruit inspectors. We can look at the fruit of someone's life and say that fruit is not good. And if the fruit's not good, then something needs to be done to make the fruit better. And yes, that's judging. But we're told to do that. We're told to determine the tree by its fruit. Determine the person by the fruit of their lives. So there is a, an essence in which we as Christians are to judge one another. And call each other to the atten uh, to attention to make sure that we are both living right. And so my challenge for you, my request of you, is that you judge me. That you look at my life and if you see something in my life that is inconsistent with God's word, because that's the standard. That you come to me in love and you say, Scott, what I'm seeing doesn't line up with what I'm reading and maybe I can explain myself. Maybe you misunderstood what I was doing. Maybe I was circumcising, technically, or, or figuratively. Maybe I was circumcising on the Sabbath day. Maybe there was something that I had to do to keep God's law that made it look like I was breaking God's law. And that's why Jesus says, judge with right judgment. Don't just judge by what it looks like. Understand the reasoning behind it. That's the challenge for you and me. That when we look at people, we don't assume, we don't assign evil motivation to them. That what we do is we look and say, well, that doesn't turn out very good. How can I help them turn out better? Turn out what they're doing better. Go back and read this again. Go back and look at Jesus' life. And then I challenge you to, first of all, get your life right with God. And then to help others on their walk with God. 
Thank you for joining us. Let's close with a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for the blessings that you give. Father, I thank you for your love and your compassion. I thank you for forgiveness. Brother, we all fall short in, in different ways, and maybe sometimes daily. Maybe it's an attitude. Maybe it's a thought. Maybe it's an action. And Father, help us to have a pure heart and, and not desire to do wrong, but desire to do right. And Father, thank you for the forgiveness that you give through Jesus Christ, that when we do slip up, that the blood of Jesus Christ continues to cleanse us from sin. Thank you for that sacrifice. Thank you for Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining us for Weekdays with Jesus and John. I look forward to our time together again tomorrow. And until then, my prayer is that God will bless your day. Ancient words.